Hello, welcome to this Data IQ product overview video. Data IQ is a data set management and storage monitoring tool which focuses on unstructured data workflows which are represented via common network and cloud protocols such as NFS, SMB, and of course S3 object. The feature set begins with the concept of cross-platform scanning and indexing. Of course, Data IQ indexing primarily supports data repositories on Dell EMC storage platforms such as PowerStore, OneFS, and ECS. It also supports third-party storage as long as industry standard protocols of NFS, SMB, and S3 are presented. It all begins with the single pane of glass approach found in Data IQ's browse window. This presents an aggregated view of all of the configured volumes a data IQ abstraction of network shares in S3 buckets. So each volume represents data that has been scanned and indexed according to path and file name information. The indexing is stored within the index database and is represented in the lower portion of the browse window where folders files are displayed along with file counts, aggregate size, average age, and distributed costs as assigned by the business when the volume is configured. The left pane of the fully in-browser display contains actionable tabs specific to working with the volumes. The right-hand pane provides views into the metadata attributes of the volume contents and provides available actions native to Data IQ along with any installed plugins which extend Data IQ functionality. Once all of the data has been scanned and indexed, it's now possible to execute fast searches across all of the volumes. You have the option of searching all volumes or the current folder. In this case, let's search for the word Lighthouse. We'll type in Lighthouse and Data IQ will access the index database and search across all of the volumes and we can see that the word Lighthouse has shown up in two different volumes. One is an NFS share and one is an S3 target on an ECS. These results can be flagged for later actions. Now that flagged items have been mentioned, it's appropriate to take a look at the flagged items tab. This is a tool that allows the user to filter out all of the data that doesn't pertain to their current method of thought at the moment. When you're browsing through multiple volumes, NFS, SMB, S3, it's, it's possible to get completely lost down in the folder trees of any file system. The flagged items allows you to select during your workflow items of interest to be reviewed in a pane together. So as you see here, I'm going through my file system, I'm working through my day, taking note of files of interest, folders of interest, and I'm flagging them for future review. And then we will go to the flagged items section. Now I can see a concise summary of the items I have flagged, and I presented with possible actions I can take on them, such as copying the CN path, which is the volume path, to the actual file or folder. These can be selected and copied out to a notepad, out to Excel spreadsheet, out to other media for future actions, or you can call any of the plugins which may have been installed in Data IQ, such as transfer, to transfer the file from one location to another. You can click on the location and Data IQ will take you to that file or folder location within the browse window. Now, one of the important capabilities of Data IQ is its ability to allow the business to define its own business context related tags to define, to aggregate, to group its data into logical units. And it can do this in terms of line of business, manually inserted tags, or through auto generated tags or what we call auto tagging. In the tag management pane, you can see the collection of all the tags grouped by the categories for which they have been assigned. These categories are purely at the discretion of the business. In my case here, I have a development team, I want to track my primary investigators, and I want to look at my projects. In other words, I want to look at my data in terms of my teams and my people. Firstly, let's look at manually inserted tags. The use cases for line of business users easily tagging their own data to enable business level tracking and reporting. 
So on screen, I'm going to my tag management. I'm looking at my primary investigators and I have user 312A here in the middle. Now this is just a user on my network who is creating data, but it would be advantageous to have an aggregate view or a holistic view of how this user is accessing data stores, creating content and consuming storage across all of my volumes, across all of the network. So I can get a summary of what has been tagged but the user, all they have to do as they're working their way across an NFS file system in this case, is to touch their tag name to create a zero byte file. It takes up no space, but it is an indicator to Data IQ that this folder and everything below it should be tracked in terms of usage of this particular user. So notice my user is 312A as opposed to the file owner, which is root. In order to make this data show up on my report, I need to re-index the volume. Reindexing is simply an updated job. It doesn't start from the very top of the volume. It only looks for what has changed. So it's an accelerated scan. So we initiate a scan volume, which is an incremental scan. We can see our job running momentarily. It completes. Now we can go back to our analyze page. We can look at the report that we had existing before. We can see that we're still tracking show data by tags, our primary investigator, and go by volumes. But now since the volume has been rescanned and the data index database has been updated, we can zoom in on this bar chart now and see how user 312A is affecting data across multiple platforms, including the NFS Montreal dev teams, NFS Tokyo Research, and our SMB Seattle remote. All three platforms are being used by this researcher. So we can see total data usage. We can also drill down on that volume and see the average age and the cost per month if we have assigned it to the volume, and, co and compare and contrast data storage usage across the volumes by a single researcher. Now it doesn't have to be a single researcher, it can be a team, it can be a project. Now Data IQ also provides a way to create regular expression or rules-based matching. We call this auto-tagging. The use case is for tagging from a departmental or organizational level using matching rule sets to group data on a cross-platform basis. By doing so, you get a more holistic view of how your projects are consuming storage resources across your multiple platforms, including on-prem and in the cloud. These can be aggregated together in categories in order to gain insights about how your storage assets are being used, about how your project teams are utilizing those assets, about how projects themselves are progressing in terms of timeline as compared to data usage. Auto tagging begins at the volume level as defined in Data IQ. These can include Dell EMC storage, third party storage, or public cloud such as AWS or Google Cloud. These volumes are referenced by matching rules in the form of regular expressions. Now they look complex, but they're really just identifying the location of the data and some characteristics of the data. In this case, the file characteristics happen to be file name beginnings. So I'm looking for anything with PRJ or anything that's in my public S3 cloud. I'm gonna apply tags, either variables or the cloud project name, and I'm going to aggregate a report around cloud project. So now when I go to my tag report on the analyze page, I can still traditionally look at all of my volumes, what's been used, what's still unaccounted for, what's unscanned and free, and I can look at all of my volumes in a traditional manner. So I can see my GCP published point, I can see my S3 team collab, I can see my SMB Seattle remote, but that is still limiting my view to the platform approach. Now if I have costs assigned to those volumes, I can begin to compare and contrast my data usage in terms of my cost. Here I have some rather outlandish numbers assigned because my test data set is so small, but it's uh, done so to illustrate the point. Now if I look at tags and I ask for the projects because we had a category called projects and I go back to size, now I can see how my data is organized not by my platform, not by my protocol, but by my projects. And here's my cloud project report. I can drill into my cloud project and get insights as to how my teams are using the resources to the cloud project. And all of this is aggregated into a single view, which can be defined in terms of size, or once again, the costs assigned on a per storage basis. We can drill down into any of the volumes that have been aggregated in this view. 
and I can see exactly what data is in use by the team as assigned by this project. I can also look at the same view from a cost basis if I have any costs assigned. The microservices architecture of Data IQ provides an API access to which extensions of Data IQ functionality can be developed. These extensions are in the form of plugins which can be incorporated into the Data IQ UI. One of those extensions is known as Data Mover. Data IQ Data Mover plugin allows the line of business user or the IT admin to selectively move data from one volume to another volume and even change the path for which the data exists. The Data Mover plugin supports protocol movements between NFS, SMB, and uh, NFS to S3, SMB to SMB, etc. There are many different ways you can move data around to get the most value out of your data in terms of its placement in relation to age and cost of the architecture. As mentioned before, the data is moved selectively. This is not a mass engine. It's, there's no scheduling. There is no policy engine. This is designed to be a manual process where you can select data based on what you know about the value of the data inside the file. In this case, let's choose to move this log file as opposed to the other log files for analysis. We're going to select the transfer link, which brings up the data mover UI. And I want to move this to my NFS Tokyo Research folder, but I'm not going to delete the source, which means it's simply a copy of the data. I'm sending a copy of the data from this volume on my NFS Boston Corp NFS share over to my NFS Tokyo Research share. We can view the transfer. We can see that the data actually has been moved from one place to another. We can see other details about the job. We can go to that volume. We can browse down into the target volume and we can verify that the data has in fact been copied. If I go to my TME folder, I can see that that log file now exists. Notice that the file is visible from within the browse window without having to do a rescan of the volume. This is because Data IQ keeps track of its data placement and updates its index database, so you do not have to rescan volumes. The V2 release of Data IQ brings with it some new functionality. Storage monitoring was added specific for 1FS, PowerScale, and Isilon cluster monitoring. This cluster monitoring pulls information directly from the Isilon clusters using the metrics that 1FS provides. It has been aggregated together into the cluster summary dashboard or the cluster ops dashboard, as it may be called. It's possible to monitor up to 70 clusters simultaneously from the cluster summary dashboard. Here I have two clusters showing side-by-side -side information. It's designed to elevate the current status of the cluster. You get a view of its health, the 1FS version, the node counts, total capacity, and overall performance. To the right you have a dashboard navigator which gives you a series of drill down enabled sub dashboards. These dashboards cover the various topic centers that may be of interest to an IT admin. By selecting on one of the clusters from the cluster summary dashboard, you can get a drill-in view of an aggregated summary. This gives you the overall health uh, from a node status standpoint and any errors or alerts that might be elevated. Other dashboards, such as the client and user dashboard, are designed to give you a view into what the end user may be experiencing in terms of protocol latency, operations per second, overall throughput, protocol drill downs, protocol events which may correlate to the current end user experience being reported. It allows you to sort it by the top number such as the top five client IPs and user IDs or the top 10, top 15, whatever you select. This allows you to see who the top users are on your cluster and see what type of activity um, is being generated from a user perspective. There are network dashboards to help you sort through the different protocols and network usage across your uh, IP pool, um, and then there are also hardware-based dashboards that give you a view into the 
individual disks in, into the nodes, the node pools, operations across those node pools, any errors, anything that's gone into an offline state. Each of the graphs provided within the dashboards allow you to select a range either with the mouse selecting over a time range or by going up to the upper right hand corner and selecting from the drop down options such as the last 30 minutes, last 5 minutes, last 6 hours, whatever time range you're wanting to focus on in order to ascertain activity across your cluster or clusters. All of this event data is stored in the Timescale DB on the Data IQ server. So care must be taken in terms of sizing for that storage. You are allowed to manage the uh, amount of data that is stored in the Timescale DB in a rolling type fashion. So you can determine a policy of I want to keep the last three months worth of data, the last six months of data, the last one year of data. This is again event data that is collected from the Isilon clusters and is viewable within the drop down graphs. So in summary, Data IQ provides visibility into the context of your data, business insights around the way your data is organized, and IT admin insights into the way the data is accessed via the storage monitoring dashboards. So it has two audiences, the business user and the IT administrator. Thank you for watching the solution overview of Data IQ.